Sheep is going with who? Sheep is going with who? Pamir. Yes. And then Lenny, you need a sheet, but you have your own clipboard, right? Yep. Just one clipboard, right? Yes, just one clipboard. So if you see any of these kind of trucks just sitting for more than a couple of minutes, use a hash mark to record it like you do the other ones, okay? Once or twice a year, I basically organize residents to stand on strategic corners and count trucks. We choose corners based on um, truck traffic and whether it's flowing um, onto or off of a major highway or roadway. Um, we choose um, the locations also based on the proximity to areas of sensitive populations like schools or daycare centers. So we count in the morning at around 8 a.m. when um, families would be walking to school. And then again in the afternoon um, between 2 and 3 p.m. when young people and families would be returning home. And um, the basic purpose of the truck count is to bring awareness to how many trucks pass through our neighborhood on a daily basis. We have all kinds of trucks, many of them coming from the port, but we also have trucks related to the numerous waste um, waste transfer stations and the uh, incinerator, which are also located in, in the Ironbound. So anywhere between 100 and 300 trucks can pass that corner in an hour. So we deal with all the pollution, so people in like Montclair can flush their toilet, it has to go somewhere, it comes to Newark, right? Right, it's not just one or two, it's many, many issues. When I first became a mom, I just was living in the community and I learned about the truck pollution and the diesel pollution. And the first time I had to put my son on a nebulizer, it just seemed like it was, it was a terrible moment for me. Um, I never really imagined that I would be, you know, dealing with asthma in my family. And, um, you know, I, I, I was pretty clear from the start that it was environmental because of, you know, how it would happen in the times and just the number of different pollutants that we can, you know, smell and sense in the environment um, and even all those that we can't. So this is an area that has a very high level of environmental toxicants and stressors. The planes come by every two minutes, so this is not, you know, this is a very uh, stressful situation. The noise, noise is also a stressor. We have a train passing by. So from, from our point of view, the research we've been doing here, um, you know, the number of trucks that come through here, the number of trucks that idle, um, and the, you know, the amount of uh, particulates and diesel exhaust that's going into the air is a major source of, of, of health concerns. Port of Los Angeles um, is, a, is a very similar site, and they have worked with the communities to um, implement policy changes in a couple of ways. The first is that the container ships that come in can't idle at the port. They actually plug in. So they have these huge plugs and they plug in so that they're not generating diesel exhaust while they're sitting in port for hours and hours. The second major change, and one I think that would have a big impact here as well, is um, to actually uh, enforce the regulations, um, the higher, would be to enforce the, the, the new EPA standards for emissions by diesel trucks. One of the issues in New Jersey is that we still allow, allow traditional trucks in the, that are not compliant. So one of the ways that you could, and this has worked very well in the Port of Los Angeles, is that they've actually basically enforced that rule, and so the, the emissions have gone down tremendously, and that's a, uh, that reduces the health risks and uh, is a major benefit to, to the communities that, where the trucks actually come through.
African-American children are five times more likely to die of an asthma attack uh, than, their, than their white counterparts. And um, there could be a lot of reasons for that. A lot of it's access, um, access to asthma specialty care, being able to see uh, a pulmonologist, someone who can help them with their asthma symptoms. The coughing tends to be worse during the night than right. it is during the day. Yes, it does. So you probably hear them coughing a lot at nighttime. Yeah, because it's very strange when you hear it. It's a very loud, wheezing mm -hmm. sound. Right. If I give a child great medication, we can give them wonderful instructions, but if they're going back to an environment that's heavily polluted um, in their homes, they may be exposed to a lot of these triggers, the medicine doesn't have an opportunity to work the way it should. With more swelling, do you see that from here to here? Wow, it's right? smaller. Yeah. Exactly. Again, the tubes are the same, but there's a lot more swelling there. Right. When it gets like this, you can see that there's barely any air that can get through there. Right. And that's what makes that high pitch wheezing sound. <laughs> because the air is being... I'll put it this way. Before I began working in this community, I hadn't gone to a funeral for one of my patients. But in Newark, um, unfortunately, it's having children die, young children die from asthma. Um, it's so disheartening. And it happens far too often, annually. So when we're thinking about those 4,500 kids who die, how many are coming from here in Newark, the Ironbound? Well, this ship here is um, going to go underneath the Bayonne Bridge, and this isn't the biggest ship that you'll ever see. And it's loaded many, uh, many stacks high. And um, these are ships that it requires this, this channel to be at least 50 foot deep. And because it's not naturally a 50 foot channel, they have to dredge it. And that means you're bringing up contaminated soils, and the soils have to go somewhere. And during a storm, uh, there's been ships that have knocked into the shoreline. Uh, there's, with high winds, sometimes stuff flies off into the neighborhoods. Behind us is the Bayonne Bridge, which they are in the process of raising because they need to bring in the Super Panamax ships. They can't fit under the bridge as it currently is, and so they're literally raising the bridge so that it can get to Port Newark and Elizabeth. And when these new ships come in, they're going to bring more cargo means they're going to bring more pollution, more containers, more truck trips into our neighborhoods. Well, we believe that actually the port of Newark and Elizabeth and the other parts of the Port Authority um, have a responsibility to uh, make the, the environmental justice communities here whole. And Los Angeles has done it. Uh, Los Angeles did it because there was a public-private partnership and sharing of the cost, um, but there was also a lawsuit that forced them to do the right thing. So we don't have the leverage of a lawsuit to force them to do the right thing, but the Port Authority actually has a budget that's larger than some states combined. So they have the resources and they have the power to make the shipping industry pay, whether it's a container fee or else other mechanisms to pay for the replacement of these trucks. We believe the trucks should be owned by trucking companies. The trucking companies should hire the drivers. And by doing that, then the trucking companies can maintain the trucks 
um, and keep a clean fleet. Were it not for Newark and the businesses and industries that are placed in Newark, it would compromise the economic um, strength of the entire region. It's not just a Newark thing. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of the profits that come from these industries do not stay in Newark. Uh, the city of Newark is the owner of the land at the port. However, it is managed by the Port Authority, and the Port Authority receives tons of money from the leases of companies that have uh, facilities at the port, and Newark gets a very small percentage of that. Somewhere in between 8 to 12 percent of Newark residents work at the port, and so the highest paying jobs at the port, um, longshoremen or other things, uh, other positions of that nature, which, are, which can be six-figure um, paying positions, don't generally go to Newark residents. Newark receives what we refer to as all of the pollution and very little of the profits. The Ironbound is adjacent to the port, and for decades, this neighborhood has seen the impacts of trucks, traffic, emissions, uh, air pollution. So that's what makes it especially concerning, is that unlike a you know, relatively distant uh, smokestack uh, from an industry or power plant, the emissions, the soot uh, coming out of diesel engines is right in the neighborhood. People who live near roadways with a lot of diesel exhaust will like wipe their windowsills or wipe their tables at home and actually be able to see little soot particles. But most of the soot, and, and what's really most concerning, are the really small particles. They don't settle out of the air quickly. They can stay suspended in the air for days, weeks, even months. Some of the small particles that are in diesel exhaust are referred to as PM 2.5, which means that they're less than 2.5 microns or millionths of a meter uh, in diameter. And that's a fraction, actually a tiny fraction of the width of a human hair, for example. Uh, much, much smaller than a grain of sand, uh, very tiny particles. Uh, and then when they get into the lungs, what happens is that they deposit in the lung and can cause effects on the lung, so uh, worsening of asthma, uh, potentially contributing to causing asthma. We have evidence that those particles can get to other places in the body and cause other health effects. Those types of particles have uh, been associated with increased risk of a heart attack. Uh, they've been associated with increased risk of stroke. There's evidence from studies that they may also affect the brain, uh, both in terms of development uh, early in life, as well as later in life, uh, perhaps increasing the risk of diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. Well, children are, are more susceptible for a number of reasons. Their bodies obviously are smaller, but the amount that they breathe is actually larger compared to the size of their body. So sort of pound for pound, uh, they breathe more than adults. And then their lungs and, and other organs in their body are still developing. There's evidence that when children breathe more air pollution, that their lungs don't grow as well, and they don't reach the same size and lung capacity as kids who were not exposed. In other ways, their bodies are developing, not just physically, but also in terms of uh, physiologically or uh, in terms of the, the way the liver works to detoxify or remove toxins. 
So for those reasons, and the fact that kids, more than adults, may be outside playing in areas or acti active in areas where they're being exposed to air pollution, they may have more exposure for that reason. There's between 14 to 15,000 uh, truck moves a day, that's containers moved in and out of the port. That does not include movements of uh, containers to and from customers like their warehouses. Uh, so you're looking at 14 to 15,000 a day and every month that number grows. And that's only going to continue with the new bridge, with the larger ships, and the fact that uh, America is more dependent on imports. Uh, the opening of the Panama Canal is going to make this a new gateway. So stuff that now goes into the West Coast and gets trained here is going to be coming direct by ship. That's going to have an impact on this port. It's going to impact the community because there will be more containers to move and uh, you know they're going to need more trucks to do that. Probably coming from Newark or Elizabeth, we think that the community shouldn't suffer. The technologies out there to bring alternate fuel vehicles, electric vehicles at the port, in order to bring efficient vehicles that meet current EPA standards, and not to put that on the back of the low-paid workers. So what the Teamsters would want is a protection for the people that live in the community so their children don't have to be affected by diesel soot, that there be transportation corridors so communities and playgrounds don't have to hear what we've listened to in this interview, and that to give the workers the right to stand up for the rights and make sure that the companies that operate on the port property who share in the profits of this economic engine of our port respect the workers and abide by our laws.